Um, I get a question. So Jeff G from YouTube is asking how far behind are you guys on your bills? And I think what he means is, is it like a net 30 or anything like that? Um, you know, do you guys have that type of thing set up? I, I don't. Randy, really... I'm not going to lie. The second I saw that question, I immediately texted Nicole. Who is Jeff G? Do we owe him money right now? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> And so, <laughs> so that's we we don't know. I mean the the uh, we can answer that that question. I will talk about you know right right now. Like it, it's a really good you know really good time. Like the market changed last year. Okay, yeah. so so our business has been humming along, and then come July August of last year, things the market changed dramatically. We anticipated that interest rates were going to go up. We didn't anticipate that they were going to go up basically overnight. Um, mm -hmm. that's never happened before, yeah. uh, in, in the history of rates like that. Um, so if you take a look, I was listening to, um, the chief economist of NAR and he was sitting there talking national association of realtors. And he was talking about how, like, it's just been unprecedented for rates to jump that fast. So we were yeah. anticipating that, uh, and we, we've been kind of sitting there waiting for the market to change. And once the market was going to change we were going to hop deeper into long-term rentals and mm. uh, short-term rentals became a thing but one of the things that happened is um you know we probably purchased 40 houses last year in the first six months uh in the last six months we maybe only purchased five um and it's caused cash flow issues even going into this you know the beginning portion yeah. of this year um still haven't bought a ton of houses and the way that our investment work is is when we purchase a house, we get 100% of the purchase price, we get 100% of the rehab. Uh, mm -hmm. So if we buy a house for 100, we need 50,000 to fix it, and it's worth 200. Um, we get a loan for 150 at closing and 50,000 comes into our pocket. Um, gotcha. so when we're not buying houses, then we don't have cash coming in kind of at the same speed as what it used to. And then when we're selling houses, they're taking, you know, two months longer than they mm -hmm. were our entire, you know, existence. So recently, over the last few months, um, we've had, you know, cash coming in has slowed down dramatically. And Todd has been amazing at threading these needles, talking to everybody. <laughs> like, it's a true lesson in leadership on how to handle, like, like difficult times. Like, it's not always, like, rainbows and unicorns in this business. Uh, yeah. And what you'll find mm. most of the time is that most people, when uh, things are going poorly or badly, they just they just like shut up. They don't say anything. They hide. They're embarrassed yep. of it. They don't talk about it. Uh, and one of the things that, you know, Todd and I, from day one, uh, we've talked to each other about, you know, the real problems, you know, the, the good, the bad, and the ugly of this business. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, when you have real conversations and honest conversations, um, yes. and then you share that with the team and you share that with your contractors, then everybody understands. But if you don't yep. say anything, if you go dark on, on somebody, like most people tend to do when they mm -hmm. don't know what to do, <clears throat> then that person's brain goes to the deepest, darkest places that it can. Uh, and and Todd just doesn't allow that. He does a phenomenal job. So when, when Jeff said, hey, how far behind are you on your bills? I'm like, oh, <laughs> shame us. What do we, what do we owe you, Jeff? Uh, so, so based on this next question that he asked, I, he might know you. I don't know because I don't know who Jeff G is, by the way. Um, but he says, how many, how many of the lake houses are actually on the water and not blocked away? Uh, that you guys all on the water. Yeah, they're all on the water. That's what yeah. I figured, but I just want them out. So, yeah. <laughs> but no, I, I, I don't know the. Um, I don't know if there's if there's anything deeper behind that question, but okay. yeah, all, all of our lake houses are directly on the water. That's um, awesome. I mean, I would yeah, I wouldn't assume that's a nefarious question. I, I think you can say lake houses, and they have lake access, and and there's there's yeah. probably nothing wrong with that. But um, and this is a vision Brian had like years ago, and we're just kind of finally we're kind of finally jump jumping to it. And the and the market's been really nice to make the shift instead of doing like fifty flips this year. Or 52 we're going to do 26 and 26 or you know maybe even a little bit less but we're going to convert you know 26 over to short-term rentals <clears throat> maybe we, we, we we're, we're, we're kind of on a nail it and scale it so we may even slow that just a little bit because this uh the short-term rental business is not a passive 
uh, mm -hmm. business. It's pretty active and there's yep. a lot of management that comes along with it. So we want to make sure we get it right. But uh, one thing that I think we've done a really great job is finding really great houses that are on water. And, you know, one of the one of the things mm -hmm. that's out there that people have told us is the number one thing that folks want, especially when it's kind of a lake house of sorts, even if it has yep. lake access, but they want a lake house. They, they want they want peace. Peace yes. is what people are searching for in these short term rentals. They just want to go somewhere and feel at peace. And there is something about looking out at a body of water, whether it's, I mean, we've got, you know, we've, we're on beautiful all sports lakes, and then we've got some stuff on just some, I guess it would be called a pond, but you know, yeah. kids still swim in it, but it's beautiful, but it's just beautiful to look at. And so we have not gotten houses that are a block away. We've gotten them all right on the water, which I think is key yeah. for some of the rates that we're able to yeah, and, sure. and that's the good thing is, is like I remember I grew up here in Michigan. I'm from Ferndale actually, so I grew up in Ferndale. I went to all Ferndale schools, and to me it was okay. All the rich I, I lived on the poor side of Ferndale, by the way. So uh, <laughs> all the rich kids they they, they take go, go on the weekend with their parents and go up north to the lake on the on the you know with the boats and all that, and never got a chance to do that or ride four wheelers or do ride dirt bike whatever and so i always thought that was like the coolest thing to do and to, that's like okay you made it when you got a lake <laughs> you know when you got a place up north you can go to and things like that so well, Ra randy uh, you randy yeah. you made up for it because uh, you moved north to I that, did. <laughs> uh, a little town called clarkston which is right next to that one of the america's greatest cities waterford oh um, yeah <laughs> Most of it. i may or may not have grown up in uh, but uh, there are a ton of great lakes in, you know, Clarkson. I yeah. think you're very aware of the one you're in. Actually, my subdivision, uh, we have access, lake access to one of them. Yep. It's a block away, but I don't consider my house a lake house. So. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I think there's a big distinction there for sure. Yep. So um, actually, Dave from uh, YouTube uh, wanted to piggyback on the discussion about um, purchasing and the rehab plot price and things like that and to sum up what he's asking is is the funds that you get for the purchase price and the uh rehab are you using them for just that property or are you use use are you using that funds for like uh for the other properties that you have as well does that make sense yeah yeah totally <clears throat> I, I i i can take that it is it is a this is a crazy cash flow business, and we're constantly um, working on different houses. We we set that money aside for that house. It's there for the house. If there's a need here and there, it doesn't mean you don't you don't borrow from from one to the other because mm -hmm. you, you you need cash flow to do business and to get houses listed and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, but our investors know we pay we pay to every investor back a hundred percent of the time. We're on. House 200 and something right now. Mm -hmm. uh, so we've got an amazing process going. We've got phenomenal investors. Uh, we give them investor updates. They know what's going on in all those houses. We work uh, super closely with our real estate agents who are part of that investment team in, in, in different ways. And um, but but it you know it is a cash flow business. So there are times where you know a, 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 an unitemed an unbudgeted item will come mm -hmm. up. And you got to take care of it and you're and you're not whole until the house sells you know so you're in that crunch time out <clears throat> every every flipper knows you're in that crunch time where you put the money in and you're waiting for it to sell to come back out it always happens we've sold 100 percent of our houses it will happen sometimes it takes mm -hmm. an extra minute um but it actually never really did we sold houses pretty quickly back in the day it's taken you know normally we list on a friday and I, everybody this this isn't necessarily um, just us, but if we listen to Friday, we we're talking to our real estate agent on Sunday with multiple offers. So that's gotcha. how it always went <clears throat> for the most part. Now it's taken, you know, a couple more weeks. And, but regardless, you're still locking into a 30, 45 day, 60 day more sometimes yeah. based on FHA and stuff. We are wait. you've sold the house and you're just waiting for the money to come back. And, and, it, uh, and he know, clarified we, the reason here is because exactly what you just said about the, 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 the cash flow, the crunch, and yeah. with the market slowing, and 
things like that. And uh, so he, he also commented saying thanks for the clarification. You, so, you, you, you have to be careful at the same time. You know, when, when you're doing a few houses, like, like last year, our average, like we owned uh, thir in between 30 and 35 flips at, mm -hmm. at any given point in time. Um, you know, we don't have 30 to 35 different bank accounts. Uh, yep. So all that money is going into the bank account. Some projects you go over on, some you go under on. And, yep. you know, when, when you're in scale mode, uh, I don't know if this is going to go the right way. I, up into the right, and I don't know, like... That's okay. Either way, we did it. I'm going to go up into the right with this way for me. So, so when you're going up into the right, like what happens is as you're adding more and more houses, like you finish the project. Now you're waiting, you know, that two months for that house to sell. You're just sitting there waiting for that money to come back. And as you add more houses, like it's constantly like just throwing money at all of these yeah. houses. The only time that, you know, I've heard a lot of people that have done a lot of flipping at scale mm -hmm. and really you know we we were at uh wendy Patton's event last week and yeah. she's, there's a lot of people that do this at scale that don't ever feel like they have money because you're constantly throwing it at all the houses so really the only time where you feel like you truly have money is on the downside when you're starting to sell off all you know when you go from a position of like hey we're gonna do you know 50, 60, 70 houses a year, and now we're gonna go down to 12. Well, now when it starts to go down, that's when all that money that you continue to invest starts to come pouring into the business. So we're five years gotcha. into the business. The other part where, where it starts to pour into the business is just over time as you you know continue to do profitable houses. Uh, and then it just, you know, that that always adds to the coffers, but but it's a challenging business to do flipping at scale it requires a lot of cash a lot of access to cash and it's one of todd and my superpower i would say is that we do a really good job with our financial investors to be able to make sure uh that most of the time we have enough funds to be able to purchase houses to be able to continue like keeping the business going so kind of with that alex kilbro uh said he asked where do you guys get your funding from and i'm assuming private investors is that right yeah, yeah it's, it's private investors and then somebody up top asked how did you fund the first three deals yeah um, so kind of piggybacking off of that like so one of the advantages that we had is we partnered with somebody that had experience and mm -hmm. because he had experience we were able to piggyback off of his experience with private investors so Todd and myself both had a little bit of money from our corporate days uh, that we put into the business. Um, but, you know, it, it's definitely not a ton. We were able to buy a house or two with it. Um, and then, you know, so you start with your private investors. And this is what I would recommend for anybody that's trying to, like, get off the ground with this stuff. Like, partner with somebody. Like, be around a project so you can actually say, hey, this is... You know, I've been around this flipping business. I have done this project. And then one of the things that we do, Nicole on our team, uh, who's here, she says, hi team. What up, Nico? Uh, <laughs> oh. She is awesome, by the way. Uh, How's it going, you know, Nico? <laughs> she, talk about secret sauce. Uh, that yeah. girl is on fire. Uh, she can sit here. She could take this entire 90 minutes. She could probably talk the entire week uh, <laughs> about, about everything flipping and uh, absolutely amazing. Um, like yeah, Rand, is, Randy, if you're looking to do a flip someday, we will connect you with Nicole, and you'll be all set. I, I would love to. So, so she she's just a wealth of knowledge. But one of the things that we do is with our with our investors, we have these investor decks that we send out, and we share them quarterly. Uh, but if as a new flipper that's just getting off the ground, if you partner with somebody, even if you're a wholesaler that wants to be a flipper and you say, hey, can mm -hmm. I come along for the ride on this deal? Can I help see how the decisions are made? Then you can start to show some before and afters, like, hey, I was a part of this project in this regard. I saw the, you know, I was at the table, uh, you know, to be able to hear how the decisions were being made. And mm -hmm. here's like just a little PowerPoint and investor deck that shows befores and afters. And then you can talk, you know, in an educated, you know, manner with these investors, um, you know, then it shows them like, hey, you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I get that you don't, you know, have a tremendous amount of experience, but what you lack of an, an experience, you're you know, combating that with like a professional presentation. You're showing that like, hey, I've done this. You've been there and you've seen it. 
Uh, mm-hmm. And you know that type of stuff goes a long, a long way. Just the professional side of the business uh, to be able to fund these, and then over the course of time, yeah. um, you know, I'm not going to go too deep on this, but this <laughs> list right here, these are all investors for us. Oh wow! Okay, so um, so it's a lot, you know, and over okay. the course of time, you start to. Um, you know, grow that and you nurture those yep. relationships and all that type of stuff.